brother who come runs. Kami Sabro here today with Colonial Conquest. Yeah, that's right. The newest game developed by Argonauts Interactive. And it'll be coming out tomorrow. That's right. Honestly, by the time this video uploads, it'll probably be tomorrow. However, I was so excited, I just decided, oh, I need to go ahead and get in. As a disclaimer, a review copy was provided for the game. Um, and, uh, yeah, if you're curious about Argonauts Interactive, you want to support the developer and whatnot, go ahead and purchase the game on Steam. They got another game out called Galactic Inheritors, which is, uh, it's essentially a 4X strategy game in a similar vein as Galactic Civilizations 3, um, or Endless Space. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> With some interesting mechanics, for sure. Um, as a heads up as well, I'm blind as a freaking bat. And when I did, um... Uh, when I played earlier, I didn't know that this right up here was the options menu. So here it is, for those who are curious and want to know. But anyway, without further ado, let's take a look at the game, so I don't waste your time. Starting out, you have three separate scenarios. Race with Colonies, The Brink of War, and Standard. That's right, Standard's the one we're going to be playing uh, to kind of show the game. This is going to be a mix of a Let's Play Impressions review type video where I explain some of the mechanics of the game and also give you my opinion on it. That's right. You've got two separate difficulties, standard and hard. And again, we're going to play standard because what standard does is essentially of the six countries, major countries in the game that you can play as, um, it lets you only have control of your home regions. Uh, so everybody, everybody's pretty much on equal footing for the most part. And, and I'm going to pick the United States because of their relative uh, isolation from the rest of these guys. However, I will go ahead and point out that this game, unlike a lot of more realistic uh, games like Hearts of Iron and whatnot, the, the AI will be all over the freaking world conquering provinces and whatnot. So yeah, don't, don't expect them to go easy on us. Now, these are the difficulties as well right here, like Soldier, uh, Lieutenant, and so on. The different, you know, on like what kind of tier you want them to be, how strong you want them to be. We're going to keep them on a relatively low one so they don't kick our ass too soon. Um, the game is won through victory points, as you can see here. You've got 500, 1,000, 1,500, and infinite. Victory points are gained by winning battles and conquering territories, which, again, I will show you in the video. Without further ado, let's take a look at the game, shall we? All right, then, here we go. United States, start your turn. Possible actions, all this stuff, yeah. So, the way this game works is it's very similar to Risk. And again, I apologize for the low resolution. That's actually my own doing uh, because this game is freaking massive when you record it. So, yeah, because of the really high frame rates, I'm getting like 210 FPS right now despite it being on a static screen. Anyway, <laughs> so... You've got four seasons in this game. It is turn-based, like games such as Risk, and you have four seasons. The only one that you can build armies and build navies and spy on other countries is in the springtime. Now, spy on other countries, yes, that's correct. You spy on people and you can see how many troops they have in certain areas. For example, these are considered minor countries, uh, sort of like independent nations and whatnot. They're not really unified. Uh, and they, you know, they don't really work together. They really just kind of get taken over by the players in the game. If we zoom out, we can see our opponents, Russia, Germany, France, England, and Japan. That's right. And, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that's, pretty, that's, that's pretty much the basic overview. Like I said, you've got industry in each little area. Uh, if you see here, if we click the little info button there, uh, the Eastern United States, economic info, this is how much cash is gained from the region. Uh, and then an additional from having industry, this is the victory point worth of a region should it be conquered by an opponent. This is how many soldiers we have in the region, uh, how many fleets we have in the region, and various other information. Basically, if you have any defensive terrain bonuses, uh, if you have a fort bonus, which is basically allows you to fire two times in the first battle round so on so forth that's right okay and we also have a port in here so basically the eastern united states is a major industrial hub for us it's pretty much where we're gonna build all of our soldiers the game is very simplistic in the sense that you know that's how you recruit soldiers right here that's how you do it as long as you've got money 
uh, you can pretty much do it. There doesn't seem to be too much of a difference between each army aside from their costs, their naval and uh, infantry costs. Uh, so basically the United States navies are pretty damn expensive, but their, tr their troops are super cheap. A country like the United Kingdom, if we were playing England, for example, we would be able to recruit at 60,000 for soldiers and 60,000 for fleets. That's right. Now, fleets are important because not only can you raid territories with them, like, and it, basically, um, you're doing uh, shore bombardment and damaging the armies that are in that territory, but you use ships to be able to move your armies overseas. Uh, for example, if I wanted to move my army out of the eastern United States, which I have 50 soldiers, I would have to leave at least one regiment as garrison troops, but I could move 49 regiments to Cuba. That's right. So, but I would need 49 boats, of which I only have 40, so I would only be able to move 40 guys. Basic stuff. Very simple, right? Um, so what I'm going to do for my first turn is I'm going to recruit some more troops. We're going to recruit quite a few, 201 regiments and just a couple of boats. I don't really want to waste all my money because I have other things I want to show you. So we've done that. Now let me show you what spying does. Essentially, we go here and we press this button to spy on a territory. You pay 200000 in this case. Now we know that Quebec has a plus one to defender fire with 92 armies in the region. There's a port, and that's how much it makes a turn. However, the victory points that will be gained from the province are hidden from us. So yeah, 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 this is all good, worthwhile information that we need to know if we're deciding to uh, attack Quebec and make it part of the United States. Now, there's other things you can do in the game. For example, let's take the Low Countries, for example. Uh, you know, the Netherlands and whatnot, and Belgium. Essentially what we can do, as you see that they're between Germany and France. So clearly, these two countries, or even England, are going to find an interest, interest in conquering this country uh, and getting the economic benefits from it. So, we don't want that to happen. So what we can do is send economic help. Basically, as simplistically said, you just give them a bunch of money and they recruit more soldiers with it to fight off the marauding barbarians that are the Europeans. That's right. Or you could do subversion. Subversion reduces the strength of a region. Uh, and you just basically, you click on it like this, and every 100,000 is worth a unit. So basically we could spend $2 million to have 20 units desert the Low Countries armies, thus making it easier to take over. So, in this case, we would probably want to do it on Quebec. However, I'm not going to. Uh, we pretty much just did it on the Low Countries, on accident. <laughs> Whatever. It doesn't really matter. You get the gist. Now let's actually show what the combat in the game looks like. I'm going to just go ahead and send the majority of my army, so 222 regiments, onward to Quebec to conquer it for the United States of America. And with that, we'll end our turn. Nah, I don't want to spend any more movement points. Get ready for battle! And see, we can see that there's fighting going on. And it looks like France attacked St. Helena. And who is this attacking Guyana? Okay, France. <laughs> now see, we're attacking Quebec. Oh, and we wiped their army out. And took it over. That's right. Oh, who's attacking Sweden? Oh, goodness. Oh, Russia. So Russia just attacked. Okay. Alright. I imagine Russia's attacking the Ottoman Empire here as well. No. they Whoever it was did not win. Wait, no, they did win. They did win. It just didn't show up. So, that actually brings us to one of my first complaints of the game. Uh, well, don't get me wrong. I actually very much like this game. But I kind of wish that they would have, uh, you know, when those armies are attacking, I don't know if that's on purpose. So if the army loses, you don't know who attacked that region. Now, that may be the case. Uh, and I'm just incorrect about my understanding of the game. Uh, but, yeah, I would like it if you how you see the little black silhouettes, if they would actually show the country's flag who's attacking. Again, if it's meant to be like, oh, you're not supposed to know who this country is, that's fine. I'm just, I'm, I understand that, then that makes sense. But if not, eh, it'd be nice if you could throw a flag in. 
Another complaint I have is the black silhouettes. It's simplistic, yeah, sure, it's fine. But, you know, maybe replace it with, the, like, a little tiny army or something, you know? I don't know, it's, it's, it's kind of, it's a little bit too simplistic, even for the navies. Again, these are tiny complaints. The actual game mechanics are pretty solid, and the game's a lot of fun. And I gotta say, I actually find it very addicting. <laughs> it's pretty simple. Like, I've actually, this is my third game I've played, and I'm having a blast just, like, sitting here doing this. It, again, it's a lot like Risk. It's very similar to Risk. Now... It looks simple because I'm attacking minor factions and not picking a fight with one of these guys. But let me tell you something. England, France, Germany, or Russia, or even Japan will not roll over and let you beat their beat them. Like how I'm taking over these countries right now. Or I'm taking over these Canadian provinces. Those countries will whip your tail if you have not built up a very strong economic base before deciding to go in and attack them. I'm serious. <laughs> I've had to learn the hard way multiple times. So, anyway, we're going to continue marching through here. And as you can see, because it's been the other months of the year, all we can really do is move our armies. Again, during the springtime, that's the only time you can spy, you can build your armies, so on and so forth. Now, these regions that have the industrial, like the factory base, that have industrial capacity, uh, which, again, they're denoted by a little factory icon, those are the only ones that can actually recruit new troops. So, basically, I'm taking over these areas here in Canada, but they don't have any industrial capacity. They're purely just for economic base, essentially. You're just getting more money by conquering more regions. So, that brings me to something else that I would like to actually see. I would love to see... Um, like event cards and stuff like that that actually happened from my playthrough so far I haven't seen any of that I haven't seen like any cards that just you know um, or events that happen in the game to kind of change it up a little bit you know be like oh well you happen volunteers are super enthusiastic and want to the, Amer the United States to commit manifest destiny or something I don't know <laughs> get plus 50 divisions or regiments you know, stuff like that. You don't see anything like that, which would be kind of cool. It would add, a, it, um, I guess, an unfair factor to the game. As it stands, it's pretty much a board game. And don't get me wrong, that's a good thing. It's a good board game. Um, so, you know, that's, I don't know. That it, it is what it is. It's fun. I like it. Again, it's very simple. It's mostly denoted by the basics of, like, just, like, the economic situation with you, it, just money. Just money is what gets you everything in this game. It's what gets you a large army. It's what gets you um, troops and so on and so forth. So, yeah, 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 I like it. I very much like the game, and I think it's a lot of fun. Again, this has pretty much just been a tutorial video to give you a basic idea of what the game's like and to give my uh, simple opinions on it. Uh, take them or leave them <laughs> for how you will. But, I like I said, I can definitely see a lot of potential out of the game uh, to go along with what's already here. Um, like I said, event cards could be really cool. Maybe adding in um, other types of uh, tr troop types or something. like, Or maybe even have like a special abilities that you could call in when you're attacking a region. Like uh, artillery support. Let's just hypothetically say. Let's, pay, let's say you spend 500000 on artillery support and it's the equivalent of like uh, plus one bonus to your armies or something. You know, stuff like that. I think it would be a lot of fun and it would kind of change it up a bit. It would make, uh, I don't know, attacking easier, but at the same time, you know, you get less bonuses from defending or something. You know, there's just, there's a lot of possibilities that you could really venture into with that. Um, yeah, yeah, and I think it would be pretty cool to see, see what they could do. Anyway, this has been Kamisa Bro. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video has been helpful in helping you choose a game. Uh, or at least, you know, kind of if you decide to actually get Colonial Conquest. I hope it uh, it helps, you know, play the game. Help you figure it out and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's about it. Anyway, see you guys later.